Ginger, I wish I had known these tips, these tricks before I was alienated. Ginger, why didn't I know how to respond to my toxic ex before I fell into his or her traps? Ginger, why did I know how to make sure my kids were protected from alienation? These are things that parents often ask me and often tell me after they work with me. They really regret not knowing these simple tips. Once until they were they, they really regret not knowing these simple tips on how to prevent parental alienation before they became alienated so tonight i want to open this up for comments and discussion first of all remember type in connect if you want information on how we can help you please like and share this video and a little thing about why you should listen to me. Who am I? I'm Ginger Gentile. I'm known as the Erased Child Whisperer. I'm a child of high conflict divorce who, after making two documentary films, including Erasing Family, which you can stream for free on YouTube and many other sites, now dedicates my whole life to reuniting families. So this is the last generation that suffers from parental alienation. And tonight we're going to do something a little different because I want to hear from you in the comments on what advice would you have given to your former self before you were alienated? What would have helped you the most in preventing being from where you are now? If a parent in a similar situation came to you, what would you say? So I really want the comments to light up so we can start with just, you know, um, you know, if you just want to type in, you know, if you're feeling hopeful, hopeless, if you want information on how we can help you, type in comment connect but all the people are watching what is some advice you'd want to share because I can start sharing but I don't know as much as you do because you are experts in this because you are parents who are either reuniting with their kids struggling to reunite or have reunited so I want to hear from you I think the biggest mistake that parents tell me that they wish they had known about is that Family court, just because the judge says I'm finally beginning to get it or has some favorable comments, doesn't mean the judge is gonna rule in your favor. And I've worked with so many parents who've been in court for years saying the judge is finally beginning to see this. I'm like, what, they're finally beginning to realize what child abuse is? Like, we have to be very careful in putting our faith in third parties to reunite. So I now see that a lot of people are joining us, which is awesome. So I want to see some comments on what advice you would give to other parents who are in your shoes or who have been in your shoes on what not to do or what they should do if they have been alienated. So as I said before, the big one is putting too much faith in the courts and thinking that because a judge is going to give you a fair ruling or a judge says, I'm beginning to get this, that you have faith that they're going to rule in your favor. So another big mistake is that when the child has a false accusation or accuses you of doing something, you will tend to react. What a lot of parents do is they tend to say, oh, that's not true. This is what really happened. Let me explain it to you. You got the facts wrong. And that this puts the child in defensive mode. So what we should be doing instead is saying to our children, thank you for sharing that with me. Um, how does that make you feel? How does that make you feel? And then sitting with them and holding space with them. So what I got, I just have one from Susie and let's see if anyone else wants to join in. So, so Susie says, and Susie's um, working with me now. Um, I'd warn your older kids that their other parent could alienate them, explain what it is. So Susie, here's a big question. Do you think that explaining to children what alienation is, do you think that would help them or would that kind of make them pit themselves against the other parent? Anyone else want to jump in with a comment on what is something that they wish they had known before? But Susie, let's have a little conversation. So you're saying that they lacked information 
Anyone else want to jump in with a comment? So some other things that I've seen that are big mistakes that parents have made is when if you're going to use the courts, not choosing the right lawyer. So a lot of people choose a lawyer because they like them, they like what they have to say. But unfortunately, in family courts, you need a lawyer who's connected and local to the area that you're in. This is the biggest mistake I see people make, that they choose a, a lawyer who doesn't know the judges, who doesn't know the local system. They choose someone from out of town because they're good because they know about alienation. And what they're not doing is they're selecting a lawyer who knows the judges. So this is a big one that I see all the time. This is a big one, um, a big mistake that I see um, with people. Then they don't ask their lawyer, what are my chances of winning? What are my chances of winning this case? And I've worked with parents who are convinced that the other parent will go to jail for alienation. And I have to say, ask your lawyer if it's possible for someone to go to jail in a civil case, unless it's for a contempt charge. And they never ask their lawyer what possible outcomes are. So they've been spending money and operating under a false ideal that they can get an outcome that is impossible for them to get. So when you hire a lawyer for a criminal defense case, it is very common to ask them, what, you know, um, what are my chances of winning? What are, what are our options? Should I take a plea? Should I take the, should, what should I take here? But we don't do this in divorce cases. And this is very unfortunate because what often happens with, um, with cases is parents are spending all this money to have a legal battle. Um, that, that not only do they not have it, that they don't have a chance of winning. And imagine if you spend all that time and money and effort using another method to reunite that doesn't involve the courts and isn't really as expensive. So Nadia said, my ex hired a female lawyer with an MBA in finance. I had no chance because both me and my ex had a master's degree. It was decided no child support. Back in 2009, no one really knew anything about alienation. Right, so, so tell me a little about like why, um, why an MBA or the female lawyer, why that was key and what you would have done. Because you're talking, I had no chance. What would you have done differently to have given you a chance in that situation, Nadia? Because that will really help other people. And also, Nadia, are you still alienated? Because then it's been like 14, 14, 15 years. So let me know in the comments. Anybody else have a question or a comment on what they would do if they could go back, what advice they would give other parents. And um, a big one I see is falling into the traps that the alienator sets for you. And what this is, is that what the alienator wants you to do is they want you to have a reaction to be negative, right? Um, to react with sadness, frustration, or anger, and then they'll use it against you. And who knows you better in this world then you're soon to be X, right? So what I think is very important is to realize that they're setting traps. They may be nice to you and then mean to you, maybe mean to you only in private. And however they showed up in the beginning of the relationship is often how they're going to appear to other people. Um, so, so this is very important to think about what traps will your ex set for you? And how do they appear to you when you first met them? If they were charming and nice or very soft, that's how they're gonna to appear to the judges. And you roll in saying, this is unfair and unfair and unfair, and they're gonna go with the other person you're falling into a trap. So the biggest key takeaway is emotional regulation. I see parents fall into traps over and over again, over and over again, over and over again. So Nadia, she's answering, would have hired a lawyer with a finance background. Yes, if you're dealing with a finance complex case, you need a lawyer who specialized in what you need. Again, in my experience, having connections with the judges trumps everything. And also as a client, putting a limit on the lawyer. I'm only gonna be in court for six months. This is the limit I'm gonna spend. Because if not, your lawyers are incentivized to keep working on this over and over, like years and years and years. Rob McKenna says, I would have changed pickup and drop-offs 
and have my ex do much more driving. Right, so this is a great point, Rob. Pickoffs can often be very contentious for people. So when they're very contentious, what it means is that there's fighting or you have to go to their house and they won't open the door and it's all very awkward. So the best place for pickups and drop offs is the school because you're there alone and you're in a, you know, you're surrounded by other witnesses, you're not going onto their property. So I firmly suggest that. Anyone have any other suggestions? So Don Bruce says, honestly, the courts are the, ex the exact place you should never go. I, I agree, Don. Hiring a lawyer is throwing money in the trash. The money's collected from court. Go to the judge's retirement fund. Don't do it. It's sad and horrible. But just walk away until the children are old enough to reconnect. So Don, I agree with the first part. But there's so much that parents can do. So Don, I want to ask you a question. Um, is, there, is there a reason why you believe it's just waiting? on what can we do besides waiting because a lot of parents think it's court or do nothing and there's a third way if you're interested in the third way let me know so Nadia said my son and I recently met for the first time 16 days ago my son needed time and space to process my ex had power and control issues and with the judge so Nadia what are you interested in doing to reconnect are you interested in help in getting assistance in making sure that the relationship is positive that you're able to rebuild because a lot of parents put so much emphasis on the meeting right and and you know it's on how can i connect with my child and they don't think about how do i rebuild this relationship that has been damaged on purpose and also your child was raised by an unhealthy person so they learn what love looks like from an unhealthy person are you able to show up in a healthy way are you able not to fall in their traps and be triggered let's see what other comments are um, Josephine Bros is in third way to reconnect. Josephine, so we have some people who are on the roadmap. Josephine, you are learning the third way because Josephine and some other people, um, I, I have a great comment from Lee Mai. So Nadia Crane, I highly recommend the roadmap program. Um, Josephine is in the roadmap program because she is learning how to reconnect and we're having a live call in about 15 minutes. If people want information how they can join calls led by me where you can ask your questions but here's the even better part it's not just asking me questions we bring on regularly alienated kids and their parents who have reunited and you can ask them anything imagine being able to ask a child like your child what caused you to reach out what caused you to reconnect how did your mommy or your daddy show up for you um so limai i realized setting boundaries did nothing only made it worse so limai this is a so boundaries are important um my question for you is when you set boundaries did you tell the other person don't do this or you're crossing a boundary nadia says meditation doesn't work so so limai if you can answer me if not i'll, I'll answer the question for you and, and talk about how to set boundaries Mediation doesn't work when one spouse has power and control issues. So most mediators are unequipped to deal with this. So what I would also recommend is that you look for a mediator who is specialized in high conflict divorce or go the collaborative law route. The collaborative law route is something very interesting that people don't know about. And that is when each party has a lawyer, but the lawyers will not represent you if you decide to go to trial. So there is an incentive for the lawyers to work on an agreement and they are not just vowed to represent you as the client, they represent the entire family. It's very interesting. Okay, so Li Mai, so this is something that comes up, boundaries don't work. So when we, um, and I was talking to a mom about this, and for years her alienator has been driving her nuts and won't give her special needs son medication. So like real major control issues. And I work with her to see that telling him why not giving him medication was bad and they also have joint decision medical making power you never want if someone's high conflict you don't want joint decision making power um it's better that a third party has it or you have it but don't don't do joint because then you're in discussion the rest of their your life with this person so she was setting a boundary you have to give medicine you have to do this this is why and like you're never going to convince someone especially when someone enjoys fighting with you right so what she did instead, what she started to do was says, I see that you don't want to give our son medication. Could you please tell me more about this? 
So I understand because I value your opinion. And he goes, okay, I'll give the medication. Sometimes, and this is what we forget, we gray rock or we don't emotionally react, which for some people is very hard and feels inauthentic. Um, we say these are my boundaries and you have to respect them like someone has to do something. And we forget that what a lot of these people are driven by is control and feeling like they're powerful and important. So we should start every conversation by, by um, what Bill Eddy calls an ear statement. Empathy, attention, and respect. Wow, that must be tough. You have my full attention to solve this problem and I respect your opinion. And a lot of times this statement alone will calm down a high conflict person. So Dawn, are you interested in a third way? So Limai, and also getting emotional, we only communicate over email. That's a great strategy, only over email. So Dawn, I totally hear you, and I did a whole movie called Erasing Family, which you can watch for free on YouTube, on our website, erasingfamily.org. There's a ton of resources. Um, there's even a hotline you can use, all free. Um, I do not believe that the family courts are appropriate venues. They can sometimes put in an enforceable order, and that's it, if you use them early on. But even in most cases, you should use mediation. And what most people do is they try to prove after the fact that alienation or orders aren't being followed. And the courts are very um, useless in that case because the other party has already gotten used to nothing happens if they do something wrong. So I see a few people who I don't know, like Lee Me and Don Brew. Um, are you interested in learning this third way how to reunite. Because what I wanna do for all the people here is give you a special invitation to join us tonight. Um, you have some people on, 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 on this chat right now that you can ask questions of like Josephine, Nadia Crane who recommended the roadmap, um, Susan, Susie recommended the roadmap, Rob is on the roadmap. So I have like four roadmap members and in about 15 minutes we're gonna get on a call and I'm gonna coach them on their questions on how to use the roadmap, which is a 12 week course, it's a system that gives you all the tools you need to reunite, also meditations or prayers or rewiring, whatever you wanna call it to rewire your brain. And the calls are recorded if you can't make them. And here's the best part. You can try it out for free because if you don't like it, we have a 10 day money back um, guarantee, no questions asked. So um, if you are interested, write connect. And so Dawn says, I watched it, love you so much, recommend it highly, Erasing Family, Dawn. So I'm gonna give you this message right now. Um, so I'm gonna give you the link if you wanna join right now in the next 10 minutes. If you wanna think about it, that's okay too. You can join next week, but in literally 10 minutes, we're gonna get a call. Um, so here is, So Josephine, I just sent you a message and I also replied to you in a comment. And for anyone who's like, where is this link? It's in the first comment and it's in the description of this video. So, and Lee, I'm also going to send you the link to join. I'm also giving you a reply right there. Anyone have any questions about the roadmap? Um, and I wanna read you um, a response from a woman who just started to take the roadmap so you all have, have some hope. So let me, let me pull this up. So this mom messaged me. And this is what she said. Ginger, two days ago, my son called me. After 14 years of no contact, we met briefly today and reconnected. Small steps. 
He said he needs a lot of space. He said the callus was seeing his best friend who just had a baby. The baby fell asleep on his son on my son's chest. The next day he called me. He wanted to connect with me sooner, but he didn't feel like he had all the tools yet. Today he has said he had enough tools in his toolbox and will be adding more. Thank you, Ginger. My aha moment was the first lesson of the roadmap expectations. Expect your child to ring the doorbell. Be ready. Who here would like to be the next person who can write an email like that? Who can say, wow, I'm a success story. If you are, all you have to do is click on the link and join us. And again, you have nothing to lose. If you don't like it after 10 days, you just say, I want a refund and I'll refund you all of your money. And it's not just me who you'll be working with. You'll be working with some amazing kids who are ex-alienated kids like me, who are now coaches. And we also bring on special guests, moms and dads who are reunited. So I hope to join, to see you all there. Rob's gonna be on there. Uh, Josephine's gonna be on there. Nadia, Susie. So many people who are on tonight are really getting a lot of value about this. So if you have a question about the roadmap, because I need to get off in a few minutes to join that course. Um, you let me know. So mom reuniting, I love that. Because Josephine, you say erased mom. I'm sending you the link anyway, Josephine, but you're on, you're on, the, you're on the call um, tonight because you're on the roadmap. So for all of my roadmap members, remember check your email with instructions, email support um, if you have a question. And for those who aren't, if you have a question, let me know. Mark will be on, okay, Josephine. So like seven people are gonna join. So for the people who haven't joined yet, tonight's your invitation. And if you need some time to think about it, go to reversingparentalalienation.com. The link is in the description. And we have a wonderful 20 minute video that walks you through all the steps. And I want all of you to have success stories like Ruth. And we all learn from each other. That's the great thing about the roadmap. You're not just learning from me. You're learning from other alienated children who are now coaches. You're learning from moms and dads who are reunited and each other. Because I found that all of you have such similar questions. So I hope to see you soon. I'm getting off now. Just click on the link, join tonight. And remember, you have 10 days to try it out, to give it a test drive. And maybe you'll be like Ruth, who after a few weeks, her son calls her. And people are always like, well, I, my kid, I, I have no contact, no way to contact them. They can read your energy. There's ways to reach out. But if you shift your energy, your kid will feel it and they will reach out. I've seen it time and time again. And people are always like, how can I reach out to my kid? I'm like, be the parent that they reach out to, that they want. Someone said, my kid only emails me when, I, when they want something. Then we need to make them want to have a relationship with you. See everybody soon. Good night.